fellowship. Are you guys excited to praise God? <laughs> Do this with me. We're going to give him all the glory tonight. We praise you, Father, in this moment. We give you all that you deserve, our lives. We thank you, Father, for your sacrifice. All we can do is praise him. You guys ready? Here in your life we find it's come alive, a sacrifice of grace. Yeah, like that. A city on a hill, surrender to your will, your glory on display. Your glory on display. About you guys, but I'm super happy to be in this place. And uh, you've been prayed for. You're not here by accident. You're worshiping with us online. Thank you for taking time. No matter where you're at, Jesus is awesome, and He's awesome in this place. He's awesome in your living room, and He's worthy to be praised. We're gonna we're gonna continue to give Him our all. You guys with me? Come on. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. You're worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Yeah. singing this song last week. It's called The Battle Belongs. When all I see is some battle, you see my 
Fellowship, how are you on this cold, snowy night? Oh, good. You sound good. You guys came to worship. That was awesome. That was you. You guys were worshiping before Pastor David started, so that was awesome. Hey, listen, uh, we want to welcome you here today. Uh, whether you're in person with us Saturday night, and tomorrow is just all online, uh, but whether you're in person with us now or you're going to watch us online either now or tomorrow. Uh, we, we pray for you that are sitting around the fire drinking hot chocolate in your pajamas right now. And so uh, if, if you want to up your hot chocolate game, uh, my, my, my grandkids taught me this. Uh, you put the s'more marshmallows in the hot chocolate, the marshmallows that are about the size of a baseball. 
I mean, they're awesome. That will up your, your hot chocolate game. But anyway, that's for free. We want to welcome you here tonight. Uh, there's several ways that you can give here at Fellowship the Rockies, whether, uh, whether it's online, whether it's in person in the boxes, or you can text to give, or you can mail it in. However you choose is okay with us. Hey, listen, we've been, we've been walking through the Psalms together, and, and I, in life journaling, we just, we just life journaled this Psalm, Psalm 15. And it's the description of a, of a godly life, and I just thought it'd be good for us to read it, and then, then let me pray. And here, here's, here's what a couple of the verses says, starting in verse 2. It says, the one who lives blamelessly practices righteousness and acknowledges the truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue? Who does not harm his friend or discredits his neighbor? Who despises the one rejected by the Lord for, but honors those who, who fear the Lord, but who keeps his word whatever the cost? May that be a description of our lives as believers walking in the generation in which we're walking. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love, and Lord, we thank you for your grace. And Father, we just, as we've read this psalm, the fact is David walks through these, and then he says the one who does these things will walk securely. And so, Lord, forgive us. We're this last week where we have fallen short. We have said things we shouldn't have said. We've done things we shouldn't have done. But Father, may we, may we take this psalm and and Father, may we, just, may we just try to live this out, to love each other well. And would you give us grace and would you give us peace as we worship you? For we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Give it to him. church in one voice. You silenced fear. You silenced fear and no shame.
deserves it. You broke the curse of our sin. so worthy to be praised, God. And we thank you that we can come in this place and do that, just that. And now we're excited to hear from you, God, a word from you through Pastor Charlie. Bless him as he speaks. Lord, we thank you. In your son's name we pray. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. Well, hey there, everyone. My name's Brady. Welcome to Fellowship of the Rockies, and thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. Before this weekend's message, we'd like to take a few minutes and tell you about some things coming up for you and your family around fellowship. So check this out. If you are interested in baptism, we want to walk you through that decision. We are baptizing the weekend of February 27th and 28th. So if you'd like to put your name on the list, please call the front office at 719-544-5000. If you are new to Fellowship of the Rockies or a longtime attendee, Next Steps is a great place to start. These steps include a dinner and a series of classes that will help you know much more about the church, connect with a great church family, and discover how God has designed you to serve in a fulfilling place of ministry. Next Steps classes will begin again on March 14th, so check out our website to register. Fellowship Women Moms Night In is a community of moms who meet on a Zoom call once a month, and the next one is coming up on February 18th. You can check out more information on our website under the event calendar button. Join a community made to support each other as you walk through motherhood. Well, we're so glad to see you here this weekend. For more information on any events or ministries, please visit our website, www.fellowshipoftherockies.org. Have a great week. Here's Pastor Charlie with a message. Hey, listen, I'm so glad you're here tonight. Uh, I was worried we were going to be preaching to a, like an empty room, but there's a lot of people here, so welcome. We are gl Man, I'm glad you're here, and the way that you worship was awesome. So, so you may have counted, 
and you may know that we normally we do four worship songs, right? And then you're like, hey, they only did three. We didn't get our money's worth type deal. We wanted, <laughs> we wanted four. We wanted four worship songs, and we got three. Is this over? And so, so we've changed things up a little bit tonight. And so uh, I'm going to preach, and then Pastor David and Nikki are going to come back up and, and, and lead you in a worship song, kind of closing out these last four weeks together uh, where we've been focusing on, on just some doctrines of scripture. So, so many of you know, we've been in this series in second Corinthians and we've been walking verse by verse through it. And then all of a sudden we come to that passage in second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. And, and actually we've been illustrating, we've been preaching this one message for the, like the four, last four weeks, just the doctrines to help us understand. And the scripture was this, this is therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And so we've been talking about how to, how to actually live that out in life and what that means and becoming more like Christ and assurance of salvation and, and, and what it means to follow him. And, and so we've been unpacking that. And so tonight, as we close this, the title of this sermon is uh, the, the, the Cure for Guilt and Shame. Just the cure for guilt and shame. And, and so ju just so we're, we're tracking and we understand each other, there's good guilt and there's bad guilt. And we're going to understand that tonight. And the problem is that if you and I, if we do not de deal with our guilt, then our guilt will turn into shame. Uh, this is what David's dealing with. We're going to talk about that tonight. Uh, Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 are the, like the two texts that we're going to use tonight. We're just going to walk through those psalms together to understand this. And so Satan's lie in all of this when guilt turns to shame is simply this. is there, There's just absolutely something wrong with me that cannot be repaired. And that's what shame is. Shame is coming to that place to where you, know, where you, you and I come to the place and said, you know what? There's something wrong with me that cannot be repaired. Shame is this deep feeling of guilt or sadness or hopelessness uh, because of something that maybe we, we've experienced in the past and we're convinced that because maybe we've blown it in a particular area, uh, because we, we, we committed a sin in a particular area, past failures, hurts, pains, bad habits, and all of a sudden, it's left like this emotional scar in our life. And either we wonder if it really can be forgiven or we feel like that we're carrying this, this banner. We're carrying this scar around, around with us. And, and so, you, you know, we're, we're really good at hiding that, right? As humans, we've learned that even if we carry those words or we carry that shame, that if, that if we're not careful, we're really good at hiding it. You really see it like on, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, don't you? I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. When you look at someone's Facebook page, Twitter, or Instagram, and you see pictures of people, they always seem like really, really happy, right? They always seem really happy and a lot of joy and all those other things. But, but when, you, when you really start thinking about that, you realize behind every photo, uh, there's a story, and behind every story, there's a past, and, and there's, there's good things in our past, and there may be some difficult things in our past, there may be some bad things in our past, and, and here's the issues of our past. Unresolved issues in my past, unresolved issues in your past, they, ju they, they don't stay there. Unresolved issues in our past have a tendency to follow us and mess up the, the present, mess up today, and that if we're not careful, they'll, they'll mess up our, our future. And a lot of times the reason that you and I struggle is this issue of shame. And there's something in our past. There's a failure. There's a hurt. There's a pain. There's a sin that we just kind of feel like maybe God hasn't forgiven us for. And there's that hidden hurt. And because of that, we can develop issues in our life. And, and unfortunately, then when we come to Scripture, right, sometimes there's this perception when we read Scripture that everybody in the Bible is just like perfect because a lot of times we, we talk about their highlight reel. And we, we look at these people in the Bible, maybe we feel like that they're, they're perfect or they, they had it all together. I, all we have to do is just read the Bible just a little bit, and you'll realize that the only person that was perfect in the Bible, the only person that had everything to, together in the Bible was God. I mean, he was the only one that was perfect. He was the only one that, that had everything together. And, 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 and then when you look at, like, David's life, we have a tendency with David to say he, he was a man after God's own heart. And we, we begin talking a little bit about David's highlight reel. But, but when you look at David's life, you realize David was far, Listen, David was far from perfect. And listen, the good news is this. If there was hope for David, there's hope for us. David... I don't know if you know this, David had a past. 
I mean, David, well, maybe we'll put it this way, because I, I, I just, I want you to understand this. I want you to track with this tonight. David had a past, and, and if you put his life like in a, in a TV show, a movie, then David's life would be a lifetime movie and not a Hallmark movie, right? I mean, you, you know there's a difference, right? Don't you? You know that, right? There's a difference between a Hallmark movie and a lifetime movie. A Hallmark movie is like that movie you, you watch to, to see romance or find out how to get a man right. And a lifetime movie is how to get rid of a man. I mean, I mean that's really, honestly, that's really the difference. I mean, men, you may want to pay attention to which one your wife is like watching. I mean, the Hallmark movie is like that woman, that power woman that's working 90 hours a week and she's kind of lost herself, so she goes to like a snow village to like find herself, and then she meets this guy that's like in a Christmas tree farm or he's shoveling snow and he has Brad Pitt looks and Bill Gates wealth, and, and then all of a sudden like they, they get married and they live heavily after after that and then the lifetime movie like totally different i mean lifetime movie is how to get rid of a man and so so david so we we understand each other right now okay so david david's life would have been a lifetime movie and david david was yeah he was a man after god's own heart and and david there was a time when when god told him that you're gonna one day be follow saul and be king of israel and and i mean for david his career everything was like like going up and then one night he sees a, a lady like a next door lady and she's bathing and he invites her over and they have an affair they commit adultery then they find out she's pregnant and then they try to hide it and so they have her husband they have her husband killed in a lifetime movie and they have her husband killed and they thought they got away with it they thought they had covered it up but God knew and God saw so God sends a man Nathan to his house to talk to him and to confront him about that. And David's story, David's life is a life about how does God handle this? I mean, it's a life of adultery and deceit and murder and dishonesty. And, and this story can help us. It can help us in our life because if, if God could, could, could forgive David and wipe his sins away and still use him, then guess what? God can do the same for us. And God can forgive us, and God can take care of us. And, and David was like this unlikely, he was like this unlikely candidate. I mean, God loves, I'm just telling you, God loves unlikely candidates. That's why I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. It's good. <laughs> God loves unlikely, but some of the memes that are going around are really hurtful right now. I don't know if you guys saw that meme that's going around on social media about Tom Brady. If you want to keep Tom Brady from winning another Super Bowl, put him on the Dallas Cowboy team. <laughs> that ended right there and so uh so D david had hidden hurts and he had pain and and when you look at when you look at when you look at guilt in the scriptures you realize that there's some good guilt and there's some bad guilt good guilt leads us to repentance that there's good guilt and there's bad guilt in the scriptures and so guilt is this realization that you've that that you have you have done something wrong you have done something bad Shame is totally different. Shame is when guilt isn't dealt with in your life and you just carry it around for so long that all of a sudden you have shame and shame is this feeling that you are, you are something bad because you have done something wrong. And so I'm going to use Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 to help us understand this. And just, just a little heads up about the Psalms and that is this, is that, that the Psalms are numbered, right, in chapter numbers, but that doesn't mean they happen that way chronologically. Uh, Psalm 51 actually happened first, then Psalm 32. Now, you just need to remember that as we walk through this. Psalm 51 is when David's confession of his sin, God forgives him of his sin, and then Psalm 32 is what happens after David confesses his sin and begins to walk with God in a deeper way. And so three things for us tonight, and in just a few minutes, Pastor David and Nikki are going to come up and close this portion out you know, with a worship song. So the first one is this. There's a, there's a problem with guilt. There's a problem with guilt. I, I know very few people who no longer are tired of guilt because with guilt, there's bondage. Guilt, guilt if you've never carried guilt, and guilt hovers over you. And guilt hovers over you like, like a dark cloud, Psalm 38, 4. Here's what the scripture says. David's talking. He says, my guilt overwhelms me. It is a burden too heavy to bear. 
Psalm 51, 1 and 2 says this, Be gracious to me, God, according to your, your faithful love, according to your abundant compassion. Blot out my rebellion. Completely wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. I don't know if you've ever carried any guilt, but guilt, this issue of guilt over something that you've done, if you're not careful, it, it's, it's, it's like always before you, right? It hangs over you like a crowd, the, the cloud. The best illustration that I have of this is a number of years ago, some men in our church asked me to like, go to the gun range with them and, and shoot, and I carried my backpack, and, and I went and went shooting with, with a bunch of men in our church. And, and here's what I learned about shooting with men in our church. There's a lot more talking than shooting. That's just how it works. We just, there's a lot more, isn't that right? There's a lot more talking than shooting. And we tell great stories. And so we went out to the gun range. We shot together. Uh, that next day, I was flying to Dallas. I had a pastor's meeting in Dallas, and I was going to drive to my, my parents' home in, in Houston. And so I, I went to the airport. I went through TSA. Uh, I, they scanned my, my backpack. I got on the plane, and I had to get my iPad out so that I could read. I opened up my, my backpack, and there in my backpack is, is, is a magazine with bullets in it, and I'd made it through TSA, and one, I'm wondering, how safe am I now, and so, and then the other thing, I don't know if you've ever, something's ever happened in your life to where you realize something, and you break out in that, like that sweat, and I'm like, now then I'm sweating, because I'm wondering, what, what am I going to do with this, and I, and every time the stewardess, like, came near me, just, you know, to ask if I needed water or peanuts back in the days when they did that kind of stuff, um, I mean, I would, like, freak out, do they know, are they going to say something, what's going to happen, and I didn't even enjoy the plane ride, because I was so worried I was going to get caught, I didn't know what to do, I mean, it was like, it, like, hovered over me like a, a cloud, see, that's what guilt can do to us. Us. Guilt can hover over us like a crowd to where it, cloud to where it's, it's always. In fact, this is what David says, Psalm 51, 3. He says, for I am conscious of my rebellion and my sin. My sin is always before me. I mean, I know, and I'm just wondering who else knows. S 2 Corinthians seven ten says, for godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. But worldly grief produces death. And so now all of a sudden we see there's two types of, 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 of guilt. One is a good type of guilt that leads you to repentance, that leads you to do something about it. But this worldly guilt, this worldly grief, what he says, means I'm only, I'm only sorry I got caught. I'm only sorry I'm having to deal with some consequences. That's a bad guilt because what he says, it doesn't, it doesn't lead to life. It leads to death. And see, when we look at this word repent, a lot of times when we talk about the word repent, especially in church, we think it's one of those angry words, right? We think it's one of those angry words with the angry eyebrows, and it's this bad word. But listen, I'm telling you, when you understand who we are in Christ, it's, it's a good word. It's a good word. It, it takes guilt off of us or sin off of us. It gives us a way back to God. I mean... God provided us the very thing that we as humans need when we sin a way back to him. And to where we admit ourselves back to him and, and we're back in fellowship with him. There's a psychologist, his name is Dr. David Samans. He writes this, he says, if you can pinpoint your guilt, that is good. But if you just have a general sense or a vague sense of guilt, then you need to delve into it much deeper. Find out what it is that you have not allowed God to forgive you of. In other words, what he's saying, you've got to do any, everything you can to get rid of sin, to get rid of guilt in your life. The second thing is this, is there, there's an answer to guilt. There's not only a problem with guilt, but what the scripture tells us is there's an answer to guilt. Sin leads, what he's saying, sin leads to guilt. And so when we're repenting, we're not repenting of guilt, we're repenting of sin. Guilt is like, the, is like the warning light on a dashboard of a car. I mean, it's warning you of, of an interior problem. And guilt in our life is an indicator that something's not right in our life. It's an indicator that there may be sin. And that's why he says there's good guilt and there's bad guilt. Good guilt leads you to repentance. In Psalm 51.10, David's just praying. He says, God, create a clean heart for me and renew a steadfast spirit in me. 
And David needed to come, Nate, David needed God to come in as, to, to forgive him of his sin, to create a clean heart in him. Psalm 32 shows us what it was like when, when, when David was repenting. Psalm 32 verses 1 and 4 says this, How joyful is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How joyful is a person whom the Lord does not charge the iniquity, charge with iniquity, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones became bitter and my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was drained as in the summer's heat. In other words, what David said, I became physically weak. I became physically sick. I, be I mean, emotionally, I was struggling during that time. Verse 5, then, then I acknowledge my sin to you and do not conceal my iniquity, I said. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord as you forgave the guilt of my sin. And so he didn't just forgive the sin, but his guilt was taken away. There's a good guilt and there's a bad guilt. And for David, all of a sudden, when he, when he, when he confessed his sin and he repented, his fellowship was restored, his, his relationship was secure. He was still a child of God, but God did something. And he not only forgave him of his sin, but he removed the guilt in his life. And the third and the last thing is this, is there is a release. There is a release from, from guilt. Psalm 32, 6 says, it says, Therefore, let everyone who is faithful pray to you immediately. With great flood waters come, and they will not reach him. He sweeps, listen, he sweeps our sin away, what the scripture says. He removes our guilt. In fact, is Isaiah 44, 22 tells us this. He says, I've swept away your transgressions like a cloud, and your sins like a mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. And so many times, I, I think we can be guilty of think that we, when we repent and we ask God to forgive us of our sins, he just like sweeps them under like, the, like a rug. And then when we sin again or when we do something wrong again, he takes us over the rug and he lifts it up and says, look, this is, this is all you've done wrong. And yet scripture says something of the opposite, that when God... When God sweeps away our sin, it's like the morning mist that will never appear again or will disappear. And the only time you and I are reminded of our sin of the past is when we remind ourselves or when Satan reminds us. And Satan, listen, Satan is a genius. It's splicing a highlight reel together of our past, of everything we've done wrong, every sin we've ever committed. Listen, let me tell you something. Don't let Satan put a question mark where God has put an exclamation mark. Man, Satan would rather point out your transgressions and your sins and the transformation that Jesus Christ has made in your life. When you look at these scriptures, you realize Jesus removes our sin. Jesus takes away our sin. It says Jesus sweeps away our sins. Other scripture says Jesus hurls our sins into the sea, never to look at them again. I mean, to hurl something means to cast it out of one's sight, cast it out of one's per, per, uh, uh, possession. One, one Texan put it like, like only a Texan can put it. He said, when God buries an ax, he doesn't leave the handle above the ground. And when God buries your sin, he doesn't leave a handle above the ground. In fact, as Psalm 103, 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but the east and the west never touch. North and the south, they touch. You're always either going east when you go around, or you're always going west, but east and west never touch. And what he's trying to help us understand is, is I'm... When you confess your sin, when you repent, you will never see your sin again. You will never face your sin again. You will never see those sins again. When God forgives, God not only forgives, but what Scripture says that he forgives. Listen, <laughs> this last week I did something interesting. It was, just, it was just a question I had. I had a question of David is an Old Testament character. Uh, most of us know that. So I went to the New Testament, and I said, how many times does David's name appear in the New Testament? And then what is 
what is said about David. Those were two very important. I don't know why uh, inquiring minds uh, want to know. And so uh, I just wanted to know. Do you realize, and, and I counted it, you can count it for yourself, that in the New Testament, David's name appears 57 times. 57 times his name appears in the New Testament. Do you realize this? When you read the, every time when David's name appeared in the New Testament, it never once referenced one of his sins in the Old Testament. Never once said anything about it. You know why? Because when God forgives, he forgives. As far as the east is from the west, God forgives you of your sins. God takes your sins. He takes my sins when we confess them. And scripture says he throws them in the ocean never to look at them again. Other scripture says he throws them in the ocean. ocean. He turns his back never to look at them again. Why is it sometimes as humans we can believe the promises of scripture? I mean, we can believe that, that, that God took five loaves of bread and two fish and he created a miracle, and he fed 5,000 people that day. Or we can believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why is it oftentimes our faith struggles when we wonder if a powerful God can truly forgive us of our sins? Never remind, them, remind us of them again. Never treat us as our sins deserve. And I, don't you think it's time that we begin to accept that? If we're going to live out the verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, when we are in Christ, the old is gone and the new has come. I looked at the Apostle Paul and Simon Peter's life, and if you know anything about their past, they had a lifetime original movie past. There was really nothing good about their past. I mean, when you look at their past, and then all of a sudden you look at like Simon Peter, who was, who was, who was a coward, who, 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 who said he'd follow Jesus and he would die if he, would ha if, if he had to. And yet he denied Christ three times. He abandoned him when he needed him the most. And then, and then Paul. Paul, before he met Christ, he was a ruthless person. He approved of the stoning of, of, of Stephen, the first martyr, and, and somehow... Uh, through this, God still reached him and saved him. This is what it said about, about Paul in, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Paul's writing, he says, And I thank God, whom, I'm, who, whom I serve with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. When you look at the Apostle Paul, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Simon Peter, he preached the message in Acts chapter 2 at Pentecost where 3,000 people got saved. And this is the same two people that, that in their past had, had failed. And if it's, if it's possible for Simon Peter, if it's possible for the Apostle Paul, it's possible for David to be restored, then it's possible for us. This issue of reconciliation, we've talked about it, just means to be brought back into proper relationship. Paul, uh, David uses the words restore, restore back into proper fellowship. Psalm 51, 12 says, restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. David desired restoration. David desired the joy to bring back the joy of his salvation, not his salvation. He never lost his salvation, but the joy of his salvation and when you look at David's life, you realize that God, God reached him. David, David came to the place. He was tired of his guilt. He was tired of always being around him, always before him. And the question for you and the question for me tonight is, are you tired of your guilt? Has God forgiven you in some areas? You're not even that person anymore. And for some reason, you are doubting that tonight. Are you carrying some labels around of your past, of a sin or a failure? And you've asked him multiple times, forgive me. And you're not even that same man anymore. You're not even that same woman anymore. 
but you're carrying that guilt. Scripture says, understand forgiveness and that he has totally and completely forgiven you. Now listen, I, I, I love my doctor to death, and, uh, but it's, it's kind of a fun game. Uh, my doctor hates it. He hates it when I, when I come in and I self-diagnose myself and says, well, the Google tells me I have. Or Web, WebMD, I was on WebMD, I got some rare disease, I got like three days to live. And so I'll always self-diagnose and I'll say, you know, I'll reference, well, you know, WebMD says, or well, you know what the Google says. And so my doctor always gives me the, the same speech. He looks at me and he says, he says, Charlie, Charlie, you got to quit getting medical advice off the internet. Don't do that anymore. Just stop it. That's why I went to school. That's why I got a degree. That's why I did all this. And I would, I would tell you, because for me, what started this series and what started diving into 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that when we're in Christ, the old is gone and the new has come, is that all of a sudden, on the Internet, Facebook theology, and I don't know if you know this, you can't get your Christian theology from Facebook. Don't get, get your theology from the Bible. But what happened on Facebook, it started going around Facebook and people are sharing and people are talking about it. But these guys on Facebook started talking that this could be the end times in Matthew chapter 24. That the end times talk, that in the end times there's going to be some people that are falling away, right? They use that word, falling away. And then all of a sudden some people were talking that maybe it's possible for a Christian to like lose their salvation. Listen, let me tell you something. Matthew chapter 24, that term falling away was not talking about salvation. It was not talking about, you know what it was talking about? It was talking about in difficult times when Christians go into the wilderness and they, they can get discouraged, they can lose faith, they may, not start walk, they may not walk with God as closely as they once did. Has nothing to do with salvation. Has nothing to do with salvation. Fact is, that reference that Jesus was referencing went all the way back to the Old Testament. When the children, when the children of Israel went into the wilderness, they, were, they, they fell away in the wilderness. They were still his child. They were still the children of Israel. God still kept his covenant to them. They just got discouraged. Listen, I'm telling you, do not get your theology from Facebook. 1 John 1.9 tells us as Christians, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know when I got the guilt of the of the bullets in my backpack on the airplane is when I got to my parents' house and I left them at my parents' house. <laughs> and the next time I got on the, the airplane, I knew my backpack was clean and I didn't have to worry. You know when our guilt is removed? is when we confess and we repent, we empty the backpack. And 1 John 1, 9 tells us that if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Pastor David and, and Nikki are going to make their way up, and, and as they're making their way up, I, I just want you to take this song. And if you're walking around with labels, if you're walking around with labels in your life, maybe someone is, is given you, maybe someone has spoken over you, or something that, that you're carrying, I, I want you to know tonight that God forgives you. you. guys, that God forgives you totally and completely. In Christ, you are totally and completely forgiven. In Christ, you're deeply loved. In Christ, you are lacking nothing. And when God looks at you, he looks at you at the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Positionally, 
perfect. And so tonight, we're just going to use this song just to worship to as we think about this message. So would you just stand with me? And then I'm going to come back up as they lead us. heads with me and close your eyes 
Let me ask you, what is God saying to you as a result of this message? What is your next step? Every one of us has a next step. Is there a sin that you need to get set free of? That's not even who you are anymore. You have confessed it. You have repented. But yet, for some reason, you have a feeling that he hasn't totally and completely forgiven you. So maybe tonight, you need to accept that you've been totally and completely forgiven. He hurls your sins into the ocean to look on them no more. Your sins are as far from you as the east is from the west, which means you'll never have to look at them again. You'll never have to face them. And maybe tonight there's some of you that say, you know what, I I just need someone to pray for me. Well, we want to pray for you. And if you're carrying a burden, we just simply want to lift that burden. Whether it's a medical issue, a financial issue, whether it's a health issue, whether you just want to mark this moment. But if you need prayer in any area of your life, then I'm going to ask you in just a few minutes after I pray that you just step out and you begin making your way down to the front. We'll have some prayer partners walking with you. We'll have some people coming with you. We'll have prayer partners down here that would love to pray for you. Father, we thank you for today. And Holy Spirit, would you just speak to us now? Would people respond to you? Would burdens be lifted? Would prayers be answered? Because we know that we have met with you. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you need prayer right now, would you just step out, begin making your way down to the front? You don't have to be a member of Fellowship the Rockies to respond to this. If you need prayer in any area of your life, if you're carrying a burden, we just want to pray for you. So just make your way down to the front. You just tell us your name and how we can pray for you. And we'd love to have the opportunity to pray for you. And so you just come. You come. There's some of you that your next step is to follow him in believer's baptism. We have had a large number of people accept Christ. And we would love to help you take your next step of believer's baptism. And so you can let us know by just filling out the connect card. There's a QR code in the front. You can scan that. Of the, the seat back in front of you and then the connect card to come up if you're watching online you can go up and fill up the at the top of the screen there's a connect card click on that and that we would love uh, to for you to fill that out that it go directly to us and then we'll get with you and we'll walk you through the process of being baptized and to get baptized well as we have done every week as people are just still making their way down for, for a prayer partner. And we'll guide you, we'll direct you. Just tell us your name and how we can pray for you. But as we have done every week, it's just a blessing. It may make his face shine upon you. It may give you grace. And may this week, may you know the peace of Christ. Thank you for being here. You're dismissed.